Since fidget spinners are trending these days, I decided to recreate this accelerator made by TenorTech. Let's get started. Easy EDA, an easier EDA experience. Try it out yourself at easyeda.com. So before we get started, I want to show you guys a cool new addition to EasyEDA, which has been added to the library. They have added a website called lcsc.com where you can buy parts used in EasyEDA for very low prices and up to 50% discount. I have used this for the first time during the process of making this project and I have to say it's very convenient and easy to use. Also, this project is based off of TenorTech's Instructable which is linked in the video description. He has entered three different contests and it would be nice if you could vote for him if you liked his concept. To get things started I placed down all the necessary parts from the LCSC library and made the necessary connections between each component. I will fast forward this process since all the documentation can already be found in Tenor Tax Instructable, link in the video description. on two separate tracks, each one giving special emphasis to certain sections of the orchestra, as heard from those positions. Now, when played back simultaneously on two separate systems, the sounds are blended together to achieve a new dimension in sound, impossible to obtain in a monolo recording. So now it's time to start on the PCB layout. I started off by placing the components roughly in a good position because I knew I would be going to fine tune the layout later on anyways. While you can see the process in the background, let me explain how this works. You have to attach three magnets to each end of your fidget spinner and make sure it's as balanced as possible. The PCB only consists of three real components except for the connectors of course, which are the MOSFET, coil and reed switch. Every time a magnet crosses the reed switch it will get triggered and thus allow current to go through. The switch will trigger the MOSFET and this will create an electromagnetic field around the coil. The magnetized coil will then pull the magnet to itself which means the magnet moves away from the reed switch. This way the MOSFET will switch off the current supplied to the coil and thus the coil demagnetizes again. Since there is a spinning motion going on the following magnet will cross the switch and the process starts all over. Now unfortunately I could not get my hands on the perfect coil and magnets for this project so you will not see my spinner accelerate to top speeds but you can still see it in action once it's finished. Stereo 
symphonic sound for the home is recorded on two separate tracks, each one giving special emphasis to certain sections of the orchestra, as heard from those positions. Now, when played back simultaneously on two separate systems, the sounds are blended together to achieve a new dimension in sound impossible to obtain in a monolo recording. have arrived as well as the ordered components. Let's get to the best part. Soldering. Firstly, I use some adhesive rubber to make sure the PCB doesn't move around when soldering. The first components we are going to solder are going to be the resistor and the diode. To solder these small components, it's a good idea to firstly solder one pad. Once there's solder on it, heat it up, place the component over it, then let it cool down until it's secure. Once it's positioned correctly, you can solder the other side of the component and it's all soldered. Not that hard, right? The only thing you have to pay attention to is the orientation of the diode. The triangle on the PCB represents the triangle as shown in the schematic as you can see on screen right now. Now comes the harder part, soldering the MOSFET. I found that the easiest way to do this is to firstly thin the large pad as well as the back of the MOSFET. Place the MOSFET in the correct position and then heat up the metal piece sticking out of the back. This will heat up the solder again and once cooled down, the MOSFET should be secured onto the PCB. Now all that's left is to solder the remaining two pins of the MOSFET. Now I'll solder the connections off camera since they are regular THD components and I'll be back with the end result. Now as you can see, I applied 12 volts DC to the circuit. The only downside of my version is the fact that I couldn't get three identical magnets, which causes to trigger the reed switch at different angles every time. Due to this, my spinner couldn't accelerate to top speeds, but as you can see, it still works and it's a success for me. I hope you like this project and perhaps you like some of my others. Feel free to check out some of my other videos as well as subscribing to my channel. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.